Greetings, my friends. Jimmer Linz here with your Source Filmmaker Tip of the Day. Today is Tip of the Day number 78, and as always, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and thanks for all the great feedback. It is truly appreciated. In today's Tip of the Day, I am going to describe to you how you can uh, use multiple maps in your shot. So you can have one shot with one map and one shot with another map within your Source Filmmaker project. I'm also going to briefly explain why you might or might not want to do that and what some alternatives uh, to that process might be. So first, let's talk about how maps work. Uh, when you load a map in Source Filmmaker, what you're really doing is you're setting an attribute in the element viewer that says, here's the map to use for this film. And that will carry down to the individual shots. So the first thing that we want to do, if we want to use multiple maps, if you're just using one map, ignore this. Just right click in the in the in the viewport and select unload or load map and pick the map you want and you can use that map for your entire project. None of this is necessary if you're only using one map. Uh, with, at least within one source filmmaker project. If you want to use multiple maps, let's go ahead and blade a shot. I'm going to blade a shot. Let's say I want to have stage, which is this one, and stage big, which is a larger version of this you'll see in a moment. Stage big is just a larger version of the stage map that uh, uh, I'm going to use for an example. So I want stage, I want shot one to be stage, and I want shot two to be stage big. Simple enough. You might have multiple maps that you're using. Maybe you've got custom maps that you're making for scenes for your for your movie, uh, or you've got uh, multiple scenes that you want to create in different canned maps out of TF2 or what have you. Either way, you might have a need to unload and reload maps. Uh, the first thing that you're going to want to do uh, when you want to use multiple maps, after you've loaded your map and you've set, you've set up the shots that you want to have different maps with, go and right-click the film strip, not the, not the shots, but the film strip itself, and say Show an Element Viewer. And you'll get this thing here that says Film. And then what you're going to do is just click the Up button a couple of times until you get all the way to the top, okay, where it says Session. And then expand this Active Clip node. And make sure that if there is something in this map name attribute that it is removed. Okay, you want that to be blank. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is go to your shot, your specific shot, right click it, say show an element viewer, and then pick the map you want for that shot. I want stage for the first shot, and then I'm going to go to the second shot, and I'm going to say stage big. Okay, and you'll see instantly that when that happens, I'm in shot two, it says wrong map loaded, but if I go and I move it back to shot one, everything's fine. Now, if I unload sh the stage map and load stage big, Okay, that's stage big, and it looks great here, but now when I scrub back, it says wrong map loaded. That is just letting you know that when you're in a different shot that has got a different uh, map name attribute on it, Source Filmmaker is like, uh, you've got the wrong map. I can't figure out what's going on here. And so all you're going to see is a black void uh, in your cameras. And you'll need to manually load and unload the map so you can work in different shots. So when you go to render the, the scene, what will happen is if you go to File and Export Movie, when you pick your movie settings and so forth, it will say, you know, it will load the map. And so it will add time to your rendering. Now, if you're rendering over the course of like I've had renders take, you know, days sometimes. And so if you're doing like an eight or 12 hour or 16 hour render and there's four map changes in there, it's not that big a deal because it's not going to add a huge amount of time. But if you're just doing a quick and dirty uh, mix down, then excuse me, you may not want to have a whole lot of scene transitions using different maps because it just adds time. So you need to kind of plan ahead. Typically what I've done when I've had multiple maps is I will try and block out the work so that I can do all of the work in one map in one shot. So if I needed to do a bunch of, you know, animation in shot one here, I'm going to load stage. Uh, and then I'm going to do all the work I need to in that one. And then I'm going to move on. Okay, I've done all of my animation. I've added all my models. I've created all my shots and stuff. And now I'm going to go to shot two, and I'm going to load the, the new map manually, the, the correct one for it. And then I'll do all the work in this one. But when you go to actually export it or mix it out, then uh, it will need to load and unload at these different transitions. So as it's progressing, rendering the frames and, and so forth, it will get to the, to, the, to the last frame of shot one and say, okay, it's time to load a different map. So that will be handled automatically in the 
export, but it doesn't happen here. You have to manually load and unload. And the biggest trick to remember is that this uh, uh, up here, you just go into the animation set or into the element viewer and just go all the way to the top of the tree where it says session, expand active clip. And if you want to use multiple maps in your shots, uh, in, in different shots. Just make sure that this map name attribute is blank. Now, I've had situations where for some reason Source Filmmaker doesn't seem to figure out that I blanked that out, so you might need to try that a couple different times if you don't get where it says the wrong maps loaded when you switch to a different shot and so forth. Uh, you might need to close and reload your Source Filmmaker project. It can be a little tetchy. And as always, when you're playing with the Element Viewer, be sure to save your work often because the Element Viewer is a dangerous place. And if you make a mistake, you can completely bork your whole project and lose all of the work that you've done. So as Valve likes to say, here be dragons. Now, what are some situations that you might not want to use multiple maps in your shots? Well, I can think of a couple. Like if you've got a big scene where you've got everything, you've got a long shot in one map, like two minutes of action and people doing whatever, and then you've got another long shot in another map, you know, whatever, just just load the different shots and and use different maps because you're not actually adding a whole lot of time to your to your render. You're also not adding a lot of time to your workflow pipeline. You can just unload and reload the, the right map. However, if you've got a complex scene, like I guess one right off the top of my head would be a phone conversation between two people that are that are the scenes are actually taking place in two different maps. Well if you've got multiple scenes taking place in two different maps and you need to swap back and forth between those, you're going to be loading and unloading and loading and unloading during the at least during the export. And it can also make handling the animation side of it a little trickier. So you might want to, in those scenarios, look at alternatives. Uh, one of the alternatives would be to have separate projects for each of the scenes and then stitch them together in some sort of software like Adobe After Effects. I use Virtual Dub because I don't actually own After Effects. I wish I did. Uh, or something similar to that. Um, so you can you can then stitch things together afterwards. You can use techniques like instead of actually using Source Filmmaker to export the video, you can export um, uh, the images as frames and then uh, put the whole thing together using AVI Synth or Virtual Dub or your favorite tools. There are different ways to make that happen. But I think that the, the trick is like, you just need to identify what the most optimal workflow is for you when you're dealing with multiple maps and the number of transitions and essentially the load time uh, required to load the different maps. And, and larger maps, I mean, these stage maps, they load really quickly, especially on my computer. But if I was to be loading like Gold Rush or, or uh, one of the more complicated maps, it takes quite a while to load. Uh, and that adds a lot of time to your work. So if you're going to do this, then you kind of need to think ahead and plan your animation pipeline so you're doing the work in one map and then you can switch once and do the work in the other map and then when you're done you can export the whole thing and it'll handle the scene transitions automatically but if you've got like 20 different scene transitions with a between two people talking over the phone or or something happening in two different places then you're going to have during your during your export it's going to be unloading a map and loading a map doing a few minutes of exporting and then unloading a map and loading a new map so it adds time to your mix down to your render. So you might need to, to adapt your process for that. Another option, and this is one Valve tends to recommend, is that you can actually take the maps themselves and create like a sort of a Franken map using Valve's hammer editor. Uh, if you have the ability to do that, that's that may be an, an even better alternative because then everything's handling, handled in the same map and there are no map transitions. So if you know anything about hammer or you know somebody who does, uh, then maybe, you know, if you've got two scenes taking place in two different maps, just Tell somebody, hey, can you glue these two together and give me a, a decent version of this map, a custom version of it, so I can just load one map and do all my work in it? Uh, you know, you'll want to make sure it's relatively well optimized and stuff, but it doesn't have to be optimized for gameplay. So uh, it's 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 an alternative to consider, but you do have to know how to use Hammer uh, for that. And yeah, I can barely use it myself. I mean, I can do a little bit, but not a huge amount. So. Those are some of the things that you can do. But again, to use different maps, to recap, what you need to do is go to the top of your element viewer, expand the active clip node, find the map name attribute and blank it out, and then use show an element viewer on a per clip basis, on a per shot basis, excuse me, and set the map name using either type it in or use the ellipsis to browse to it. And then it will tell you when you've scrubbed into a shot with the wrong map that doesn't map that particular map name, match that particular map name.
So there you go. There's your Source Filmmaker tip of the day. I appreciate you uh, watching. I hope this was helpful to some of you. Uh, and as always, thanks for, uh, thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to the next one. Uh, so until the next time, I hope you have a great day and enjoy using Source Filmmaker.